Andy Hawkins will neutralise the mine using a one-man risk protocol. So much more the fun. air quality has been assessed as good and lighting is provided by way of the generator on the surface. He will record the operation using two cameras, one of which is attached to his safety helmet. Well, here we are in the dragon's lair and it's time to pull a few teeth. So what we're now about to do is clear down through the trench that's sitting in front of the mine, expose the initiation system and the initiation set down there, see what we've got. I think it should be igniferous at this end. So we'll make that end safe. We'll then take down the stack until we get to the ones that contain the uh, primer, primer chargers. Uh, then we'll cut those open, take out the primer chargers, put them away somewhere safe so they can come out for the Demoniers to get rid of and then I'll just rebuild the mine so that we have something that's uh, archaeologically sound. Tell me about why it's necessary to do one man risk. What we've got to take in mind is that this is explosives and what we have is explosive that is 90 years old. We've got de detonators in here which probably have deteriorated quite considerably we have gun cotton, which again may well have deteriorated within the uh, ammonium nitrate that's in the main charge. All these produce sensitive crystals. So the objective will be to take it apart very gently, but there is always that million to one chance that something might not go right. And therefore, it's a one man risk. So my instructions are? For you, Andy, as soon as you've got this camera running for me is to depart I will give you time to get clear and then I will start to defuse this mine. What follows is a short summary of the operation. The complete video record can be found in the ROM folder as a WMV media file and can be played through most Windows and Macintosh platforms. Started to look a bit better now. Just trim this end off and seal that. Our trusty Gerber, or the Chogi shop, in Iraq. Right, I'm going to need to now take this, these sandbags out, I think. Set of sandbags have got to come out. Into the trench, I think. Like that. That's right, now we'll expose those. And that now is coming across, and it goes into that bag. Right, so we have wires into this bag, more wiring coming across here, right, okay, there's some bags down there, don't look too good, and then wiring going down there, so, let's get some photographs. See how they've done that with the handles going across, look, so that they can carry them easier. Right, here's one of the bags we're interested in, so that'll have a primer set in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to extract that primer set. You can see the cables coming in. What I think I'll do is the primer set's likely to be in this area. Is we'll make a, a flap in here before we move it out. Um, yeah, before we move it, I think. And we'll just extract that primer set. Oh, there we 
again with some explosives. And what we've got to do is find out where the primer is. Detonator and don't cotton primer. Right. Let's have a second one in that. Right, that was this. It's just a fold of the hand. That one's definitely done. Good. Okay. So that's one done. That's good. Right. Let's see where the next one is. New concept here. Uh, so I'm getting a bit tight. Start bringing them all out. are in pretty good condition though. Right. So how many I got any of them in I don't think so. We might find another primer somewhere. Wow. That's an interesting way of doing things. So that's going back that way. Okay then, I need to cut that. But there we are. A rather nice detonator. You can see the uh, see the corrosion. It's copper. It's a copper detonator. And we've got the copper crystals showing the deterioration. Two leads. And again, what we've seen before, the two connector connectors. Very nice little thing. And we'll get that tucked away in there. Got a few more. That's good, we'll get that tucked away. We need to have a look and see what else we got. A bit of luck. Well, there should be a primer down there, shouldn't there? I think. What I should expect to see. A bit of luck, that should, I think, be about it for us. Now, was that detonator supposed to have gone in the other primer? Maybe. Maybe somebody made a faux pas. Well, I think we got it. Nothing under there. No, that's a good spot. Nothing over there. Yeah, so I think we have a had a faux pas here. Either they decided just to use the one. Right. There we go then. Done and dusted. I'll be able to rebuild this in any semblance of sensibility. Who knows? Well, there we are. And here we have the detonator that was placed off to one side. A copper detonator. You can see the crystals, the green crystals, which are characteristic of copper corrosion. This detonator was placed off to one side and should have gone into one of the gun cotton primers, but what didn't. Now, a detonator like this, if I held it in my hand at arm's length, it would probably take my hand off in total and just leave me with a stump. And there are a few grams of explosive in there. Here we have two one ounce gun cotton primers. One of these is sufficient 
to strip back your arm if you held your arm out at arm's length it would strip it back well to the body probably take most of your shoulder the side of your head and severe damage severe damage to the body one of these placed in a car will generally open all the doors open boot and bonnet buckle the roof if not cause it to flip and blow out all the glass obviously but it makes a very good mess of a car uh, this is the one that was inside the aminol bag and as you can see the copper detonator has been rotted away by the ammonium nitrate within the bag so that detonator is not in a particularly good condition but that one for 80 years 90 years old is excellent well as you can see I've had to uh, really take this stack to pieces because the primary sort of initiation sets were actually in the very lower levels of the uh, system we had that one that was placed actually in the bag just up here but then of course we had that loose primer right at the bottom of the stack down there and then of course the detonator tucked away over there on its own so it looks as if at some point somebody forgot to set up the second initiation set the rubber looks in surprisingly good condition. It was very tough to cut. You can even see yeah. the stitching on the bags. Um, I'm going to cut open this one. There Tell us a bit about this. So this is the one that was cut open. As we can see, the firing cables going into the bag. And effectively we cut the little flaps to get in. And the primer and the detonator were tucked away just in the head and neck of the bag. And this aminal, what sort of condition is this? This aminal is looking in a very, very good condition. Nice and bright, fairly loose, nice good grey colour. That is very good. These mines effectively are still very much live mines, aren't they? Very much so. But, but still... Uh, the key will be what state the detonator's in and therefore maybe testing of that detonator is something that we should really consider. Having one in the condition that we've got is superb. So by making a mistake, they've given us a bonus.